Okay, so we're going to be creating a kind of rounded box shadow hover effect uh, on a CSS button. And we're going to be building the CSS button, as you can see at the moment. But then what we're going to be doing is adding this hover uh, effect, which gives it a rounded kind of shadow. And it makes it look uh, a little bit less flat when we hover over it. It's quite a nice effect to implement just to give uh, the idea that someone has actually hovered over this and can go ahead and click on it. So we're going to start from scratch and build this up. Then we'll look at the hover effect. This does work for button elements as well as anchors. This is currently uh, just a normal link uh, with a class of button. So it'll work for both form, submit elements, and also just normal links on the page. Right then, so we're starting out with a very basic document layout. I've only done two additional things here. I've linked in a style sheet, which lives in this CSS directory. It's just called app.css, but this obviously might be different for you. And I currently have an anchor on the page uh, with an href of just a hash, we're not going anywhere, and a class of button, and obviously I have my text in here. So like I said, this is also going to work for button elements, in which case you can remove the class and it will work in just the same way. But at the moment, you can see that these two things look drastically different. And our first goal is to make them look the same and then implement that hover uh, effect at the bottom, that, that rounded shadow. So we'll keep these two buttons here just so we can see the differences between them as we're adding styles inside of this file. And then we can see what kind of problems we come across in the difference between a button and an anchor. So to start out, I'm just going to kind of reset my body uh, in terms of fonts. So I'm going to set the font family to Helvetica. You can obviously choose whatever you want. And we have a sans serif fallback here. And I'm also going to change the font site to uh, one rem as well. So obviously this will depend entirely on uh, what you're doing or your current existing site. So to style both anchors and buttons, we obviously need to style button and the class button as well. And now we can start adding our styles in. So the first thing I want to do is remove the border from this submit button. Uh, that obviously won't remove the border from the anchor because we don't have them in there by default. But let's go ahead and set the border width to zero for both of these. You can see that's got rid of the border and also weirdly changed this background color to a gray, uh, which we can fix later with our uh, generic uh, background color for our buttons. So the next thing I want to do is set the cursor to a pointer. And the reason for this is at the moment when I hover over a link, we get that hand icon. When we hover over uh, a button element, we don't. So now you can see once I've refreshed, we have uh, this for, the, for both of them. And we are going to uh, set the line height here to normal, just to make sure nothing dodgy happens. And we're going to set a margin on the bottom of the button as well, just for uh, purposes of if you're adding more elements on your page, you want to have a border just on the bottom here. Now you'll notice that for the anchor, this doesn't work. And that's because an anchor is an inline element. Uh, but we want to style this like an inline element, or we want it to sit like an inline element, but we also want to act it to act like a block element so we can uh, actually style it with margins and stuff. So up here, I'm gonna say display inline block. So inline block. So now you'll notice that when we hover over the uh, anchor, we see that, that border and the same for the button as well. Perfect. So the next thing we want to do then is set the position to relative. Um, I'm going to put this at the top as well. Uh, we'll see why we're doing this a bit later on. And what we now want to do is start to do things like uh, set the text alignment, get rid of any text decoration for normal uh, links. So we can set the text decoration to none. That gets rid of the underline of this link. We can set the text align to center. And we can uh, add some padding as well. This is going to give us that kind of button shape that we want. So what I've done here is I've added 15 pixels on the top and the bottom and 25 on the left and the right. So you'll see that that gives us a significant uh, area to work with. We still have the problem of, first of all, the font sizes are different. And second of all, we don't have a unified background color here. So why don't we just set the font size now to one rem? You can obviously change this. It's uh, I'm just playing around with this, but there we go. We have uh, similar font sizes or the same font size. And we'll go and set the background color now. You can obviously pick a color. 
uh, but if you want to follow along I'm using 009 EFF which is that nice blue color that we saw like that so you'll also notice the problem of the, this is slightly higher if I just zoom in you can see this is ever so slightly higher and uh, what we need to do here is say vertical align middle and that will fix that problem like so okay so let's set the text color of both our button and our anchor to white so now we have a very similar looking button for both an anchor and a button element um, but what we also want to do is give this a border radius just to smooth it out a little bit and I'm going to choose five pixels so that's just rounded out the edges just a bit and that will help with that curve that we need at the bottom when we hover over so now what we want to do is focus on this uh, bottom part I'm just going to pull this down and zoom in a bit just so we can focus on this a little bit better so to actually achieve this curved effect what we actually need is a pseudo element and a pseudo element is just basically a, an element we set with CSS that doesn't technically exist within your markup uh, but it is actually there and it assists us in doing all sorts of things with CSS so to do this we say button colon after and also the button class colon after so this is adding an, a pseudo element after the element or it's still going to be within it uh, but we'll be able to style this as a new element so for this we're going to set this to position absolute the reason we chose position relative here is so this uh, pseudo element stays within the button otherwise it will float off and do all sorts of weird things and as usual for pseudo elements we set the content to an empty space we're going to set the top to zero here we're going to set the right to zero we're going to set the bottom to zero and the left to zero as well and we're going to give this itself a border radius of five pixels and we'll see why this is in a minute so now when we uh, sort of do anything it's you know it's kind of not not making any sense it's you know it doesn't show anything else it's not added anything to what we wanted to do but you can see this fills the entire uh, section of the button it fills everything and the same with this button element as well it's just covering everything now what this will allow us to do is when we hover over um, and let's just apply it to the button element first of all when we hover on that button element we want to style after uh, so a pseudo element after and to, what we do is we apply box shadow here this is going to be inset otherwise we're not going to see it it will fall outside of the button we're going to set zero uh, on the x and y axis and minus three pixels here and we're going to have an RGBA value this is going to be black but it's going to have a 0.25 uh, on the alpha channel so it's basically going to be uh, slightly transparent which means that whatever color we have on the button it will still show a kind of tint of that color in the shadow and that's a really nice way to do things so now when I refresh you can see that when I hover over not this one because we've not done that yet when I hover over because we applied a box shadow to that um, a, a border radius to that after pseudo element we're getting this box shadow so let's inspect uh, the markup in here and just see what's going on so we have this after pseudo element here when I hover over uh, you can see in the side here if we just apply oops if we just apply our hover here you can see that we've got this popping up here so when we're hovering over we're styling the after element here and uh, we're applying this box shadow if for example for this after pseudo element we were to remove the border radius you can see that that kind of falls flat and sits at the bottom by giving it the same border radius we're effectively just uh, masking over it like that so that's how that works so let's just quickly apply this to the button class as well so we just do exactly the same thing like that and we now have if we just zoom out a little bit two buttons that look uh, pretty much identical with the same hover effect so you've got them unified across your project now so let's take a quick and final look at what happens if we change the color because we can see here that we have in this shadow a slight tinge of blue the same as the background color because it's uh, transparent slightly transparent so let's change this to 72d uh, 771 
and let's see what happens. So we've got a nice green effect now. When I hover over, you can see that this shadow has a slight tinge of green. Rather than setting this to a solid color, it just means that whatever background color you have for any of the buttons on your page, uh, it just means that they look pretty much identical um, and stay the same, have this same effect. So there we go, we've created a really nice curved hover effect uh, for both anchors and button elements, which uh, obviously button elements you can use on forms and anchors you can just use anywhere. And uh, obviously you can extend this functionality to add different classes to hook in different button colors and sizes. And there you have yourself uh, a nice hover effect.